The Steelers offseason program is now off and running. And today on Steelers Talk, I've got five position groups where there are starting jobs on the line on the Steelers roster here during the offseason program heading into the 2024 season that you need to be keeping your eye on. Before we get into it, uh, if you want more content from me on social media, I post a bunch of OTA content on there. So if you want videos of Justin Fields and Russell Wilson and George Pickens and all these different things, you can find me on X at Jack underscore Sperry, where I provide daily Steelers updates. And you can find me on Instagram at SparedDog.Football for general NFL content. Really do appreciate all the people that support me on social. Okay, now first up, let's talk about quarterback because I'm not listing them on my list of competitions, because we have heard a number of times from Steelers insiders at this point that this is not an open competition between Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. At least not yet, okay? They got Russell Wilson to start, and then they figured, oh, well, Kenny Pickett didn't want to be here. We need to, we need to fill the backup quarterback spot with a young talent. Okay, Justin Fields costs a sixth-round pick. We'll give him that, okay? So that's kind of the way things went. But Russell Wilson, make no mistake about it, guys, this is his job until he loses it. For him to lose the job and Justin Fields to start, Russ either needs to get hurt or he needs to play pretty poorly. Okay, so that's kind of the way things are going with the quarterback situation. Russ is number one. Justin is behind him to learn from him, uh, potentially uh, replace him if the season is kind of going in the wrong direction. But for right now, plan A is for Russell Wilson to be the starting quarterback for the future for the Steelers for the next three to five years, and for Justin Fields to be a good plan B option behind him. So now let's start with my actual list of position battles here. Um, we're going to start with kind of, you know, I'm kind of cheating here. I'm putting one category, but it's two different spots. Okay, because we know George Pickens is the number one wide receiver on this football team. But what about number two and number three wide receiver? All right, and that's going to be a legitimate question because you have guys like Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin the third and Marquez Calloway, and Scotty Miller, and Quez Watkins, a lot of guys that you know most people feel are more wide receiver four types that are going to be battling it out for the number three receiver spot. And then there's Roman Wilson in there in that mix, who I think eventually will for sure be the number two receiver, especially if the Steelers don't add somebody else in free agency or via trade. And that's also another possibility here, man. Like right now, it's just a big hodgepodge of receivers, younger guys, veterans, you know, that have been around a while that are just trying to establish their spot. But if the Steelers go out and get somebody here, uh, it's definitely possible that they solidify themselves as the number two option for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And what I'll say here is watch out for Michael Thomas from the New Orleans Saints uh, as a free agency option. I think he's probably the more likely, uh, you know, option at this point. The Steelers have been in communication with Michael. Uh, and no deal has been struck as of yet. Uh, but I'm looking at guys like Debo Samuel and DK Metcalf and, you know, Cortland Sutton and the guys that have been rumored to the Steelers. And every single one of those teams has been rumored to not be interested in trading those receivers. So if there's nothing available on the trade market, Michael Thomas is the best option for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And even if you bring in Thomas, I think Roman Wilson is talented enough to eventually replace him as the number two option. But Michael is good enough to come in and be a solidified number two option to start the year. Now let me know down there in the comments section, would you bring in Michael Thomas uh, to start the season here? Type S if you would sign him or type P if you're going to pass on him. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When it happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pinned question. Another position battle that you should definitely be keeping your eye on here is slot cornerback because Steelers haven't really addressed it fully uh, in, uh, in the offseason this year, and they've got a lot of different guys that could occupy that spot with a really good offseason and preseason process here. Deshaun Elliott is an interesting prospect here because what the Steelers could do is they could have Demonte KZ, Minka Fitzpatrick, and Deshaun Elliott on the field at all times, uh, but and it's essentially a three-safety package, but Elliott is playing in the slot. They could do the same thing with Minka Fitzpatrick if they wanted to. Anthony Averett is an interesting possibility to move inside. Uh, Josiah Scott is somebody that's played in the slot before in the NFL. Beanie Bishop Jr. has talked about how he wants the opportunity to be the starting slot corner. And then Ryan Watts has said that the Steelers are moving him all over the yard, seeing where he fits. So right now, uh, this is kind of how I see things uh, playing out. Dante Jackson has been confirmed to be an outside corner here in the Steelers defense. So it seems like the top two corners on the outside are solidified. Now you got to figure out who's going to be playing 
nickel and dime here. And I think right now Deshaun Elliott would be playing nickel. He has a ton of experience playing in the slot. That also allows DeMonte KZ and Minka Fitzpatrick to play deep. And then you got Beanie Bishop Jr. as your dime, somebody with a ton of production and ball production there uh, with the West Virginia Mountaineers from last season. Had a really impressive year, and he's somebody that's impressing the Pittsburgh Steelers coaching staff right now. So if I'd have to guess, I would say that's probably what the Steelers are thinking. But there's also some other potential options that are also former Steelers on the open market right now. Cam Sutton is available uh, via free agency. Patrick Peterson is still out there. I think he could play in the slot still. And then Shandon Sullivan, who played in the slot for them last year, is also still available. Now, if I have to predict one of these guys to get signed, I think it's going to be Cam Sutton. And the reason for that is because not only do I think he's the best overall slot corner of those three guys, but the Steelers have already brought him in to have conversations with him at least twice since the NFL draft. So it seems like there's a lot of interest there. If the NFL doesn't come down super hard on Sutton for some domestic issues that he had in Florida, some legal issues he had in Florida earlier this offseason, it's like a one or two game suspension, or if it's just a fine, I think the Steelers are going to pull the trigger and bring back Cam Sutton. Now, coming up here on the show, more position battles to talk about for your Pittsburgh Steelers. But before we get into that, let's talk about Russell Wilson here, where you can get, or not Russell Wilson, you can get an awesome Steelers t-shirt here from our friends at Fanatics when you go to chatsports.com slash throwback. Guys, I'm somebody that doesn't like to, if you've watched the show, you guys know I don't wear a lot of crazy design t-shirts. I like to keep things simple, but I really like this t-shirt here. It's classic black with the, with the old school logo on there. It's perfect to wear to your summer barbecue or to training camp when we eventually go out uh, you know, to St. Vincent and watch Russell Wilson and Justin Fields play there uh, in practice. You can go chatsports.com slash throwback right now. Fanatics has a great price on it. They're well-made. I think that their, they, their products are really, really good, actually, in terms of their T-shirts. You can get it right now at a great price when you use our link, chatsports.com slash throwback. Then we got another one, from, uh, another one here on the list. Offensive tackle is going to be interesting to me. Now, obviously, the future is Broderick Jones and Troy Fautano. Okay, I uh, hope I'm saying that right, by the way. <laughs> These Samoan names are tough. Uh, but the candidates here, obviously, Broderick Jones and Dan Moore Jr. were the starting tackles to finish last season out. And then the big question is, will Fautano come in and uh, kind of usurp Dan Moore Jr.'s spot right away? Or will it take some time? Apparently, Fautano is having a little bit of an issue uh, during practices. He's not having the best start uh, to practices both at rookie minicamp and at OTAs. Uh, so the question is, is he going to catch up by the time the season comes around? And the two big questions that Steelers fans need to be asking, number one, will Fautano earn a starting spot by week one? And then number two, if he does, is he going to be playing on the left side or is he going to be playing on the right side? Now, personally, guys, I think he's going to win the job outright out of camp. Uh, I guess we'll have to see if that is actually how what it goes down. But I think if he does win the job, Broderick is going to be moving over to the left side, and then Fautano is going to be plugging in on the right side. I think that uh, right now they're moving Broderick all over the offensive line in terms of left and right side uh, at practices. They're making sure that he's ready to go on either side, ready to go for the season. And right now they're kind of just parking Fautano on the right side. So that tells me that's where they see his future. And then I think Broderick's future is on the left side as I see it right now. So tell me down there in the comment section, who will be the starting left tackle for your Pittsburgh Steelers in week one? Is it going to be Dan Moore Jr.? Is it going to be Broderick Jones? Will Fautano find a way to get into the offensive line and on the left side? Let me know down there in the comment section what you guys think. All right, now another one here is center. Now, I don't think this one uh, is going to be particularly surprising because uh, I think that everybody expects Zach Frazier to be better than Nate Herbig. But right now, at OTAs, Herbig is getting the first team reps. Okay, so Frazier is definitely going to have to earn his stripes. And you can definitely make an argument that this is something that all rookies need to do. I certainly believe in that philosophy. I think Mike Tomlin knows what he's doing in this regard. Forcing rookies to prove themselves on the field before they get that starting designation. Plain and simply, man, I think Zach Frazier is a bulldog. I think that he's somebody that brings a ton of physicality. And I think that he's just overall better than Nate Herbig. And by week one, I fully expect him to earn that starting position. Then the final one here that's really interesting to me, actually, is the number two tight end. And you might be saying, Jack, I thought you said you were only going to be talking about starting positions on today's show. But technically, in this offense, with so many two tight end personnel being played by Arthur Smith, it just makes sense that that second tight end is a starter. 
in this offense. And, you know, I think Pat Firemuth is going to be moved around a little bit here in this uh, offense led by new OC, Arthur Smith. I think Firemuth is going to be used in many similar ways uh, that Smith used Kyle Pitts, putting him in the slot, using him as a bigger wide receiver type player. Uh, that doesn't mean he won't be playing in line and as a true tight end. But I do think Firemuth's skill set is more as a receiver. And with the Steelers not going out and getting more help at wide receiver this offseason might point to their plans at Friermuth playing more of a big slot wide receiver type role. And then, you know, out of the rest of the tight ends, Darnell Washington, Connor Hayward, Michael Pruitt, who Arthur Smith likes a lot. And then Hot Rod Williams, man, they, the Steelers really like him as well. I mean, there's a lot of very good options and in terms of secondary options here at the tight end position for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And when it comes to Darnell Washington, guys, I think the job is his if he can earn it, okay? Obviously, he is a big mauling run blocker uh, that's got incredible size and all these different things. Uh, <laughs> but then you got Darnell Washington here, who also had really, really poor reps as a run blocker last year as well. Um, you know, he wasn't the best as a receiver. He's not the best getting out of his breaks. He's not that great of a receiver. So he's got the potential. Don't get me wrong, but he's going to have to prove himself for sure heading into 2024. That'll be it for today's show, guys. Really do appreciate all of your support. Make sure you click that subscribe button right now if you haven't already. And go check me out on social at Jack underscore Sperry if you want more clips from Steelers OTAs all throughout the 2024 offseason.